this is what you need to sign as a judge. All judges nowadays are asked to sign this. And that's the certificate of eligibility and the code of ethics, which is what I've been coming to. Everything I've been talking about in the previous slides actually comes to this, because you are now asked to sign this. This form will be given to you. Read it. Don't just casually sign it and print your name, as I'm sure some of us do with lots of forms. Actually read it and know that what you are signing to. Okay, and there's our clarification on there as well about the at club contest. So you pick, you choose whichever you've got. Evaluation, Humorous International, Favourite Topics, Four Tales, whichever level it is. You've got your eligibility there. So you're signing that you are eligible, that you meet that eligibility criteria. Okay. And there's that thing about judges for contests beyond the club level are not eligible to compete in the same contest type doing the same contest circle, cycle. So I'll go look at that a bit more. You've got your ethics, which is what I'm talking about. Being at most to be objective, consciously avoided. Okay, you put your date of contest there as well. Now, uh, you don't time speeches, and the judge never considers the possibility of under time or over time when judging a contestant's speech. You don't worry about how long they're speaking for. You are judging against the criteria, and nowhere on that criteria form does it say they spoke for amount, this amount of time. It doesn't say anything there in the criteria. Remember, a lot of people ask me a lot of questions about, oh, do I think about this? And we're going to brainstorm some of these. But my answer is always, is it on the judging ballot? Is it part of the criteria? Yes or no? Yes, it's a criteria. That's what I judge by. No, it doesn't mention it. And I do not take that into account. Okay, that judges ballot, that criteria is your black and white list. Okay. Uh, you don't consider any affiliations. You have to avoid any bias. It's all written down there. Don't look at the age, sex, race, creed, nation, origin, disability, profession, or political beliefs. There's not much else left after that. But you're looking at the person as a person and what they're doing in this particular time. Um, as in their game, supporting the word and deed of the contest. So these are all the things I've been discussing lead up to what's written on this piece of paper that you are signing. I'm not a member of the same club as any contest when I'm judging at the division, district, regional, quarter, semi-final and final levels. You can see there that at, um, uh, at club level, you can be a member of the club because of the numbers. But after that, no, you shouldn't be in the area I would be signing. I have no conflict of interest in any of the contestants that would cause me to be biased. I, I would avoid having, as a judge, a partner or um, offspring or a sibling of one of the contestants. Um, there's nothing that says you can't, but when you come down to there, um, I have no conflict of interest, which caused me to be biased. As much as you would be trying to be unobjective, you do have emotional attachments to people in those cases. And I would avoid, I would never, I don't even, I've never ever given an evaluation to my husband either. I would avoid evaluating him uh, when we were both in Toastmasters together when he was there. And I would never ever judge a contest that he was in. Absolutely never. Um, if I had a daughter or a sister who was in it, I would never do it for them either. Just be make sure because I want to be 100% um, care, and that's what that, as far as I'm concerned, is that uh, conflict of interest. And then, of course, you sign it and print it and you give it back, okay, to the chief judge. 